Welcome to the jungle. I'm your host, Andy Garza, president and CEO of Big Gorilla Sales and Marketing Training. Here in the jungle podcast for all the hungry entrepreneurs, you'll hear firsthand experiences from business owners of how they overcame challenges on their road to success. Every week, we'll have a different business owner from every walk of life. If you want to learn more about Gorilla Marketing, visit BigGorillaMarketing.com. You can also connect with me on Facebook at Big Gorilla Marketing. Welcome to this week's episode of The Jungle for Hungry Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Andy Garza, and with me again is uh, our co-guest host, uh, Allison Anna from Awaken Marketing. Thanks for being here, Allison. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me again. Well, today I want to talk about startups and even go a little bit further. I want to talk about people who are even thinking about becoming a business owner and putting their own business out there. You're on the fence and not exactly sure how to do first things first. And that's what we're going to talk about. Some of the things you need to do in the beginning to uh, make things happen um, and how to properly set up a business. Now, we're not going to get into the deta details of you know, all the legalities of it. Uh, the, that's for an attorney, and you should see one to see how you want to structure your business, whether it's a sole proprietorship or an LLC or whatnot. Um, and then uh, as far as structuring the, the business, um, on, that depends on how, which way you go. You know, if you're an LLC, you got to have, you know, board members, that type of thing. Um, but... I want to talk about how to properly set up your business for success with some of the things you do in the background. Um, and we're going to talk about people first. And people's huge. It's who you get behind you and with you in this endeavor. Um, whether you're a one-man show or one-woman show, for that matter, um, or you have you know, a whole group of people, you know, secretaries and and insta installers, um, delivery people. It depends on what business you're in, a you service or a product. Um, in product, you have inventory and manufacturing and all that type of stuff. So those are things that would uh, best be attended to how you're gonna do that. And that's generally what your expertise is, is the product or the service, and you wanna build a company out of that. Um, so the people that you put around you, uh, how do you get them? Uh, we have found both Alice and I have extensive experience in networking, and that's a huge thing to, uh, as far as part of your growth is through people um, and surrounding yourself with people, like-minded people. So um, networking is a, a very good start to find out who you can put on your team, for one, if you need to hire people, but also other expertise. Um, I know Allison has some great uh, beginning stories when she was starting her business. I'd like you to touch on that. Yeah, so um, when I started out, I owned a digital marketing agency, Awaken Marketing. And in the beginning, um, it was just, you know, I was almost going to call it my name. It was Allison Anna Advertising in the beginning, and it was just myself. Um, and I took on a few clients, and it worked well that way. Um, but at, at a certain point, I wanted to grow, and I knew from the beginning that I would be growing in the future, and I had aspirations to grow and, you know, possibly be working with people and have a small team. So, um, but in the beginning, I, I didn't, I wasn't in that place to hire, I didn't have the resources and the funds to, you know, go and hire help to grow quicker. So, um, I, in the beginning, I still, you know, networked like crazy. And I would always ask people, you know, what they did and if it was something that I could use in the future for my business or on projects that we do, I would start to ask the rates and, you know, ask if we could have another coffee in a few months and build a relationship with them. So that when it was that time, I had those resources and I could kind of pre-plan with them to talk about what that relationship would look like. Um, I use freelancers and subcontractors, so I, you know, I'm not at the point and I don't know that I'll ever hire W-2 employees, but um, so it took a mutual kind of, um, you know, a mutual uh, planning of us to figure out what that relationship would look like in the future. Um, and then a lot, also a lot of patience from, from myself and them as well as we work through that process. But other than that, you know, you also have to network to just have the people that can be resources to you. 
And maybe they don't physically help with, you know, labor in your business or help on projects, but resources to ask questions when you don't have the answer because you're not ever going to have all of the answers. So you, know, you have to have those people um, that you can grow with and grow from, from, from their experiences too. That's an excellent point. And it also brings up, I know we had this conversation earlier um, that uh, having a mentor is awfully important. And when I was early on in my sales career, and that's where I built most of my sales and management uh, expertise. Um, I had somebody who was kind enough to spend extra time, not just time when I was at work. They would, uh, they knew I was very uh, ambitious uh, because I let them know that. I wanted to be more than where I was at, more than just uh, sales. Um, and he became my mentor in uh over the years, I, I just learned so much, especially in sales from the, my first mentor. The second mentor I uh, ran into is after I started getting promoted, uh, largely in management. That's, uh, I spent most of my years in management and uh, I became a mentor to my salespeople, but I also had a mentor for management um, that taught me a lot on how to deal with people and how to surround yourself with people. I always, you know, when I became a manager, uh, I had 15 salespeople, 15 to 19 you know, fluctuated, but uh, I would always look for people that I, I believe could be better than I was. Um, and I wasn't afraid of that. I wanted them to be better than I was. Um, and there were some very, very good ones that uh, uh, were good and I made them better, uh, but they became, extremely good. Uh, two of them went on to be do big things in sales. Uh, and I was very proud of that. I was I taught them some of the things that I know and they they took that and ran with it. But having the uh the mentor part uh is don't be afraid to ask people, you know, the, like Allison said, you start building relationships. Some of these mentors come from walks of life that you've never even thought of. And to become your mentor because they have some expertise and some things that uh, are in common and that they can teach you a lot. Uh, if they've been around a while, uh, they know the ropes and, and it's good to pick their brains. I've always picked the brains of everybody I ever came across, you know, in, in business or in sales or whatever. I, I pick their brains just to see where, where they're at and what their line of thinking is. I still learn. I was on an interview just uh, this past week. A uh, gentleman's pretty young, but he had a very ambitious uh, company, and he taught me his uh, uh, type of management style, and I was, I was very impressed. Um, he did a lot of things like I like, but he had some new things that I didn't even think of, so I, I'm still learning. And I don't run a company anymore, but I still like to learn. Yeah, you brought up a great point, too, Andy, that, you know, when you're talking about helping other people, I had someone tell me early on now for a quick break to thank our sponsors, Awaken Marketing, Awaken New Possibilities, Griner Law Group, Small Business Showcase Magazine, celebrating the small business spirit, m and Advertising, Creations Beyond Expectations, and Big Gorilla Sales and Marketing Training, bringing out your inner gorilla. You know, I was sharing a story of how I helped another woman start her digital marketing agency. Um, you know, she was going through the same program that I went through to, to learn digital marketing. And someone told me early on, you know, the more that you help people, when you help that person um, that's just a little bit below you, that it'll come back to you. And then that the next, you know, down the road shortly, um, someone's going to help you. And so I've always lived by that because the more that I help someone, if I see a chance to, you know, someone's a few steps behind me and I can give them a piece to help them through something, uh, it always seems to come back. So that, you know, helping others is just as important as having those resources that can help you and that you can learn from too. Yeah, such an excellent point. Um, one of my, not personal mentors, but I use him as a mentor is uh, Charles Munger uh, of uh, the Warren Buffett uh, partner. Uh, and he he's always talking about learning and teaching other people as part of his success tips uh, he put huge value in teaching other people what he knew and then learning from anything he came
can learn from up until the day he died and he was 99 years old. Uh, he still lived by that. So I was always impressed with that um, as something that I always enjoyed doing myself too. I love teaching, but uh, I was I was a sponge myself. That's the kind of thing you have to be, the kind of mindset you have to be when you're a business owner. Because you, like Allison brought up earlier, you can't do everything. Um, one of the other things we wanted to touch on is, um, you know, the one of the top five reasons, and I've said this before, the top five reasons of failure for small businesses within the first three to five years. And, and one of the reasons is because there's lack of marketing and marketing budget. And I've seen it over and over again where businesses are set up, they, they've got a product and they make sure they got inventory, they got to make sure their um, you know, supply chain is up and running and uh, their place of business looks good. Um, they do a lot of things right, but then you know they kind of run out of money and think they don't need a marketing plan that's something that they can address in the future because you know the experience right at the beginning maybe friends and family have indulged them and they think oh this is going to be easy the problem is is friends and family will fade away and you know two to three months uh, um, that starts weeding off and they find themselves having to struggle to get customers in the clients in um, and then they start addressing the marketing and by that time it could be too late because uh, you need to address it in the beginning. Um, I've talked this before, and this is uh, what I talk about in guerrilla marketing, that it's the mindset in the beginning that pays off in the future. And once you set up everything in the beginning uh, with a marketing, you know, in looking at it through marketing eyesight, that starts paying off later on. It's not something... Uh, to be confused with advertising. There is sales in marketing and advertising. Marketing and advertising are two different things. Advertising, they may have some type of special or a sale or that type of thing. Those are, that's used to pump up, you know, quick business. Uh, it's very expensive. So it's not something that a lot of companies can do. Um, but marketing is a basis of how you present your company through the rest of time. And that pays off uh, in the near future, not in the immediate future. It's not an immediate gratification type thing. It's a setup of how you present your business, whether it's your place of business, yourself, the people around you. Uh, it's all important how you set that up and make sure everybody's on the same page as far as presenting your company and the opportunities that come along with that. Um, it's not just a salesperson or you if you're a one man. So it's, it's a way of making sure that I know Allison has talked on this on the funnel of new clients. And I want you to touch on that. Yeah, sure. Um, I do just want to start talking about the, um, the expense and the investment uh, kind of piece of marketing. So um, you were saying that a lot of people, uh, some people run out of money, you know, at a certain point and they may down the road, if you start operating and you don't, you know, have a marketing strategy or a way to generate leads, um, but nine times out of 10, when I would get on sales calls with people, um, they do have the money. And it's just that they don't want to allocate the budget to marketing. And they look at it as an expense. Well, I don't want to incur this expense. You know, if I can just get money without or get sales without marketing, why do we need to market? Well, it truly should be looked at as an investment in your business because it's the vehicle that's going to help you grow and scale and get to that place that you want to be. And I always tell people, you know, okay, you have these big goals. You want to be making double your revenues in, uh, you know, a year or three years. Um, but what are you going to do different? If you're going to do the same thing that you're doing today, you're not going to get to that goal of doubling your revenues. So you really do have to put a plan and a marketing strategy in place and look at it as an investment uh, because it does have a return on it. And the other part is that marketing unfortunately, is not a guaranteed return on investment. It's mainly testing. So you have to have the right people in place, the right marketing employees, the right marketing agency to really know what to do to get you that return and spend your money wisely and invest wisely. So if you look at it as an investment and then you start to understand how to make the marketing decisions, because if you're looking at investing on the stock market, which stocks are you going to pick? Are you going to pick the ones that are 
um, you know, solid and safe and give you a, a return that kind of keeps going? Are you going to pick the ones that are um, risky, but you can really stand behind that stock? That's kind of how you need to look at in your marketing too, is, you know, are you hiring reputable people? If you want to hire an agency or train an employee. Um, so uh, all that, you know, to say that, you know, you, you just have to, you have to have the marketing in place. Um, and what was the point that you were just asking me to speak about? I forgot now. Uh, the funnel, the sales funnel. Yes. Oh, so you have to have a, a, a method of generating leads. Um, and, you know, whether you're doing paid advertising or you're out there going, you know, door to door, making connections with people every day, you have to have a sales funnel um, and a, a way to generate leads. So I have a Facebook ads funnel that generates leads for me. I can turn it on if I need leads and I know that I'm going to get a calendar full of booked sales calls. Um, but I also have, you know, uh, a group, a referral networking group, the largest one in the world I go to, BNI. That is a lead generation, a method of generating leads. Um, so whether, you, and, and then I have agency partnerships. I partner with other agencies who can refer their clients to me if they don't offer that service. So really diversifying those lead generation strategies so that you're not putting all your money in one pot. And, you know, if that pot runs out, what are you going to do? So That's excellent. Um, the you touched on a point where so you're partnering kind of with other agencies and other people. Um, that's referred to, and I teach this in some of my seminars, uh, is fusion marketing. You're fusing with another partnership of business, and it's generally something that is in your direct circle of influence as far as what you do. If you're doing digital marketing, you have other aspects of businesses that you're very close with, like uh, a graphic artist or a photographer, uh, things that you would generally need if you have a whole agency um, that can do everything. And there's not many of those, uh, but there are some. Um, but when you partner with that, you fuse together and you feed off each other. Uh, you feed leads off each other because, uh, you know, um, it, you get opportunities and when you have an opportunity to have, hey, I don't really, that's my not my expertise, but on my team, I'm, a, I'm partnered with other one, people that are that, uh, uh, have expertise in that field. Let's get them involved and I can hook you up and, and fuse together with what we're both doing and make whatever your client needs happen. And it goes both ways too. If you can refer business to that other agency, then it's a great relationship that grows. Yeah, it just it just works so well when you get that mindset that hey, let's help each other. Not that there's no, not competitors. There's people that can help each other. Um, very good point. I'd like to talk to. Um, that's a uh, that's what we wanted to talk about today. I know we could talk forever on this subject because there's so much that. Uh, we both have an experience in creating businesses and, and meeting other businesses that we learn from, um, that we would share anything that we didn't learn. But uh, that's all for today's episode. I thank Allison for being here again, and I love to hear her expertise on uh, what she does and how it fits into everything. And uh, we look forward to our next episode, but uh, uh, thank you for tuning in to this episode. This is Andy Garza, your host for The Jungle for Hungry Entrepreneurs. And we'll see you next time. If you want to learn more about guerrilla marketing, visit biggorillamarketing.com. You can also connect with me on Facebook at Big Gorilla Marketing. To thank our sponsors, Awaken Marketing, Awaken New Possibilities, Grinder Law Group, Small Business Showcase Magazine, celebrating the small business spirit. M&D Advertising, creations beyond expectations. And Big Gorilla Sales and Marketing Training, bringing out your inner gorilla.